TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see a little warning screen. May need it, may not. Twitch.com is where you can catch any of the live streams. Usernames on the bottom of the screen. We also got Patreon. We post seven to ten times a week. Including Premier League highlights. Check it out, man. Links down in the description for everything. This is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away. Season, final season, episode. You see it down in the title. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Personal debt in the UK is a row. What? On the rise. With the total amount owed currently standing at over one and a half trillion pounds. In early 2017, a leading advisory body in England and Wales dealt with nearly three and a half thousand new debt problems every day. In 2017, the average debt for every adult in the UK was almost 30,000 pounds. I'm pretty sure it's double that now. High Court Enforcement Agents Steve Pinner and Max Carraher are in Greenford, West London. Why is it so low? They have a writ to recover a large debt owed to a garden landscaping company. We're looking to collect £21,762.28. The debtor was ordered to pay substantial cost to the claimant after losing a county court case. But he failed to pay. The case has now been escalated to the High Court. The debtor must pay the money he owes today. And those so wide long. open. With the new Mercedes outside. Alright, it's okay. The narrator's voice is low, but like... The uh, DCBL people, they not. I can deal with that. Right, let's give them the knock. If the Mercedes outside the house belongs to the debtor, it could be seized to offset the debt if he can't or won't pay the £21,000. 21000 pounds. 21, pounds, you can kiss my ass. You're not getting it. <laughs> Respectfully, YouTube. Hello, madam. Yeah, before, just uh, I am to Oh, you knew? Yeah. Have you got a copy of your tenancy agreement or rent agreement? What uh, does this mean? Paperwork. Letter? Sorry? You need a letter for me? Paperwork to show who lives here. Council tax? That's anything else? like that. Okay, one second. I'm yes, no problem. Thanks very much. As the agents often get lied to, Max and Steve need to see proof that the debtor doesn't live here anymore. I'm not even gonna lie, man. I gotta tell you, like when she came to the door, I didn't see everything that was going on, and I almost really said something. <laughs> I said, I, I thought in my head, I was like, dang, she overly comfortable answering the door in a sheet. But I understand now what's happening. Like I didn't. I, I thought they was just like bundled up. Comfortability. Oh, you a star. But I she get shows it. Max see? a council tax bill. When did you move in? How long have you been here? Six years. Six years. How many people live here? Me and my kids. How many kids do you have? Three. Three kids? Yeah. Adults? It's just you and three children? There's no adult males? No. No, OK. I'm just going to look around, OK? Give me two minutes. It's all right. It's nothing to worry about. The council tax bill is in a woman's name only. But this address has been confirmed as the debtor's home. 
So Max decides to investigate further. Never take people at their first word, because often they're lying. They're lying. Right. It's something we're used to. And I suppose at the end of the day, I just need to find the documents to prove. Why he opening people's drawers like that, though? What if it, that's a woman's drawer? You don't know what you're going to walk into. You might open that drawer and see a rose. If you know, you know. What they've already told me. Upstairs in the bedroom, he makes an important discovery. Mm. I not believe that. The debtor's driving license. Right. Isn't it a coincidence? The first thing I find in a wallet by the bed, our defendant has a date of birth, 10-8-75. 10 8 75. This is our man. She tried. Yeah, that, yeah, that man has a lie. With the truth unravelling, Max probes further. I it's said, did any males live here? Yeah, just he's a. Uh, oh, okay. Some, yeah, he's, oh, uh, sometimes. He's well, half uh, the, another house. The woman now denies the debtor lives with his family permanently. So Max goes back upstairs to hunt for more evidence. I swear, some of these people be having a weakest script. Like, if you're gonna be ready, like, have a better story, you know what I mean? He finds a range of men's clothes in the wardrobe. It suggests the debtor is more than just an occasional visitor. But then Max finds a letter. Bingo. <laughs> Max. What you got? Ah, uh, okay, show the lady. It's a letter sent to the debtor at this address from the NHS. The keys to his vehicle are there. His wallet's here with all his cards and all that. Get him on the phone for me, please. He's got a bill to pay. Until we find that key piece of evidence that indicates that the defendant does live at the dress we're in, we're on... It's, I don't, it's something about Max. Like, it's the way he be talking to people. <laughs> thin ice. But when we do find that key piece of evidence, it really changes things. We can turn up the pressure and start enforcing. The woman tries to call, but Max hears a phone ringing in the room next door. Oh, wow. Oh, it's in the drawer, okay. You're trying to phone this phone that I've just found in the drawer. As the woman seems unable to contact the debtor, Steve turns his attention to the Mercedes parked outside. Hey, I got the volume to the max, so if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead to turn it up, buddy. Turn your headphones all the way to the top tier level. Quick search reveals an insurance certificate for the vehicle, naming the debtor as the owner. The scene cool. now calls for a vehicle check. Oh yeah, free finance. Free of finance. Infinite. That's not worth twenty thousand though. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's interesting. Wow. How much do you think it's worth? Is there anything on it? Probably about ten or eleven grand, isn't it? Yeah, I would say something around there. Yeah. All right, lovely. Thank you very much. Think soon. No problem. Take care. Bye. 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 You know, in America, that's like 16000 As the car is... In 2017, even more. ...is worth almost half of the debt, it's a valuable asset the agents can seize. With the car clamped, Max calls for a recovery vehicle. So it's going to be about 90 minutes to shuffle in around a couple of calls to, to get it out. Yeah, no problem. But now, the agents need to make an inventory of any other assets of value inside the house. We have a roller cab, full to the brim. There's a selection of tools there. Yep. That's nice extremely tools heavy. box. But the woman <laughs> is becoming concerned. You take in what you take? Not the children's stuff, no. All right. No, 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 nothing okay. for the children. All right. Nothing that actually belongs to you, OK? All right. The children, no, not at all. We can't take children. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I'll go. The, the good guy, man. Bring him to my son, he's really Oh, yeah, yeah. You're welcome to collect him. The woman now says she has to pick her children up from school. Easy to go this way. 
Lift up, got it. So Max and Steve quickly remove the assets. Madam, we'll put some paperwork through here so you can lock the door, that's fine. The woman locks the door and leaves from the back of the house. The agents start to load goods into the van. Really light. Definitely snatched that TV. Just moments later, a man suddenly appears from the back of the house. Hello, sir. Where have you come from, sir? What, what's all this about? We have a high court writ for you. Well, this is my ex-wife uh, and kids. Okay. I live elsewhere. Ex-wife and kids, I live elsewhere. Boy, ex hey. OK. You shouldn't, you shouldn't take anything off her. Yeah. It's her television. The TV? Yeah, it's yeah. her television. You have to prove it, OK? Mm -hmm. There's an outstanding balance, OK? On, on what? what what's, I, I really can't right. understand. These people have instructed... I don't live here. OK, well, that's funny because your driving licence, credit cards, the key yeah, to your well, car, I, 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 tools, I, I, it's yeah, all yeah, in the house. What, what I'm saying is, yes. this is my ex-wife's house. OK. But then the debtor spots the clamp on the Mercedes. What, what, why are you taking my car for? Right, if you can pay the 24000 I'm not paying a penny. I've got no money. Yeah, this... Well, your car is good, good, good collateral, buddy. This is a nine grand car, and there's at least two grand's worth, nine, a grand and a half. No, 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 you're not getting that. It's a standoff. With the debtor in direct conflict with the agents, it will take all of Max and Steve's tenacity to get this case resolved. All of the tenacity, you heard it. Max Carraher and Steve Pinner were in group. The woman they met, please close the house. I'm not paying it. Must make. You're not taking anything. We are. Oh. We're taking. We've got to take the car. It's financed. What's financed? Hmm? What's financed? It's on finance. It's not. not well, uh, yeah, well, it's being cleared. I've just cleared that. You've just cleared the finance? Yeah. So I, it's I, not I on finance. Off, I've, just, I've just paid off my student loan. OK. OK, I'm student. So it's not on finance? Well, at the moment, no. Correct. So we can take it. I'm, 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 I, yeah. I don't know anybody. I'm going to take it to court. OK. It's obviously... It's, it's been to court twice. Mate... Who are these, who are these is... people? He now says he knows nothing about the debt. We're going to try... Bro is lying. He over here stuttering. Bro said... I'm that, 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 that. Like, bro, that's cap. You know exactly what this debt for. I'm put... Get our thinking heads on. <sighs> Have you ever done? I'm any... talking about. I don't live there, but that water is ice cold. Look at the water. He came out of somewhere with a refrigerator. We're gonna try and put. Look at that. Get our thinking heads on. <sighs> Have you ever done any business ventures before? Mate, any? Mate, nothing. nothing You've at had all. no business nah, ventures. No. Steve calls the office. Hi, Mike. The gentleman here. Obviously, it's a large amount of money, and he says that he knows nothing about it. He would just like some idea of what it's to do with. But that's a. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah, he definitely deserves it. Bro was parked at a, in a roundabout. Like, they're already confusing enough, and you're parked in one? Okay, you so you it. now know as much as we know. It was a car accident. Okay. It went to court. You lost. The court then... No, I didn't lose. Okay. <laughs> I didn't lose on that time. Well, okay. The debtor suddenly seems to know all about the case. I, I, I couldn't get in touch with anybody else. Well, you heard the same information that I heard. I can't... I can't tell you anything else. But then he makes an unexpected move. He walks off, leaving his Mercedes to the agents and gives up the fight. Yeah, he knew. They do like making us bloody work for it, <laughs> don't they? When people lie to us, we ask all sorts of questions and then we ask them in a different manner or a different time and nine times out of ten, they make the mistake of not giving the same answer. So liars need very good memories. So that's where they fall over. Me, I always say, bro, it's too much energy to keep alive. Ooh, tell the truth. Minutes later, the recovery vehicle arrives. Oh, yes, there's my boy. And they've got space for the stuff. OK, it's all yours. The car will be sold at public auction. Hey, 
any proceeds raised from its sale and from the other items seized will be used to offset the debtor's £21,000 debt. Thank you very much, Brian. You take care. But if he doesn't pay the outstanding balance, the agents will be back. It was on the depths of beyond. Well, Mr Pinner, I thought it was going to rain today and it's been the hottest day of the year to lug around tool chests, yeah. televisions and the vehicle. Y'all got it done. It's a successful trip. Y'all was hit with lie after lie. OK, off the truck. Recent research has shown that self-employed workers in the UK are increasingly suffering from late payment of invoices. Nearly half report that they're struggling to make ends meet due to late payments, while more than a third have had to seek financial assistance from family and friends. Self-employed freelancers are owed on average £5,000 in late payments. Enfield, Middlesex. High Court Enforcement Agent Aaron Groves and colleague Ian Taylor are on their way to recover a debt of nearly £4,000. What do you reckon? Doesn't look a bad area, does it? Oh, it doesn't look too bad, really. The claimant was a supplier who wasn't paid the full amount for his services at a music festival organised by the debtor. Let's hope he's in. After failing to get his money back through the county court, the claimant escalated the case to the high court. And now the debtor must pay in full today. How much did they say it was? <coughs> Morning, sorry to bother you. We've got a matter we need to discuss with you. Do you mind if we just come in and have a chat? What, what's, what's, this, what's this about? Um, it's regarding the case. You've been taken to Northampton County Court. Yes, that's right, yeah. Well, they've obtained a judgment against you, yeah, uh, which hasn't been paid. So they've escalated it to the High Court. Yeah, well, uh, we've we've contested it. It's okay. been, I've, I've got a, a solicitor on the case. Okay. And it's been all officially done. I don't owe the money. I'm, I'm innocent. They made a mistake. Mm. Right. Do you want to come inside? He's lying. The moment I hear somebody stutter, they lie. Aaron and Ian need to make it clear to the debtor that although he may have disputed the case, it hasn't gone back to court yet, and so the writ is still active. The agents now have to enforce the judgment. Today we're here to collect £3,792.30. Uh, £3,000? Uh, well, you're not. <laughs> you're not paid that today. No, I, I, don't, I don't owe it. I, I, I'll, I'll show it. I've got... I'll give you a copy of the court order that says you do owe it. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, we're applying it for it to be set aside. It's not, it's not been set aside yet. It's been... OK, it's so been, it's in wait, process. Well, that means it's active. And that does mean that you're now liable to pay. Any money you pay today is held by our company for 14 days to give you a chance to appeal against it. I haven't, I haven't got any money. Okay. I don't owe it. But what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to walk, start walking around the property. It was in smooth denial that he owes this bread. It's doing an inventory of goods that we're going to be looking to remove. Oh, for God's sake. This, isn't, this is not right. Ain't got nothing to do with God. Ain't got nothing to do with God. you need to pay it. I haven't got any money. Can you, can you step outside? No, we're inside no. the property now. Quite a lot of the time, the person will be focused more on the dispute than the fact that we're there to collect the money or remove so goods. Never let them in, buddy. It's our job to make them realise that we are there to collect the money. We're not there to listen to the story. There's a dispute process for a reason. Realising Aaron and Ian aren't going to go away, the debtor gets his father on the phone. Dad, I've got two enforcement officers in my house. I'm going to remove goods. Say hi, Elliot. This is my, my this father. Oh, this with the okay. Assistant. Hello. Yeah. What you do? is absolutely outrageous. Unfortunately, though, sir, while there's not a stay on the case, that does make it enforceable. So what will happen today is we're going to be removing goods. I would like to have time to my solicitor about this because what's going on here is really, really wrong. Surely to God, 
uh, you can give us just a little bit of slack here. No, so like, you're enforcing something which is wrong. It's, it's, but it's, it's not wrong, it's, sir. We've got the paperwork that says that we should be here. This is just uh, it's, it's like living in Russia. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid we're the ones that have sent here to come and do the job, sir. So uh, it sir, it ain't that bad. It is not like living in Russia. I... What is the sum, please? Uh, the outstanding is £3,792.30. Whoa, 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 whoa. I am prepared to pay you that, but I would ask you, please, to allow me to make one phone call to my solicitor first, because I have an awful feeling that this money will be down the drain. Can I just make one phone call? I just want confirmation from somebody on my side of the fence. Uh, by all means, you can make a phone call, that's fine. Whilst Aaron and Ian wait for the man. I ain't gonna lie, they sound rich. From dad to, 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 to child, everybody sound like they got money. His father to call back. Well, dad does. Obviously, this guy does not. They're keen to find out more about the case. What's uh, that relating to, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, it's, it's, I mean, it, it's just a, a, little dis, a little dispute. He owed me some money which he didn't pay. And then when we did this festival, he, he wanted all his expenses back and I, and I offset everything properly. And uh, he's just said I owe a load of money. And if you do that on a court form, then this can happen. Five minutes later, the man's father calls back. Hello. You are here trying to offset stuff. No, no. If that wasn't agreed upon before, then that's not, that's not going to stand. He confirms what I said. You should have went to court like he did. We have raised this dispute with the court. This is a completely incorrect uh, enforcement. Is there nothing you can do to give us time to get that instruction from the court? Because you and I both know that if I pay this money, the chance of getting back is going to be difficult. It will be expensive. It will take me a month of Sundays. We can afford the thing. It's just a dispute. Mm, a unfortunately, sir, so I would advise paying it. Yeah, but I I'm not going to get it back, am I? I mean, can you not give me an hour? Sir, so, look, no matter what you do, it's not going to get you put on hold today. Just a second, that's a phone call from the solicitor. <laughs> uh, right <laughs> Quite a lot of the time, the solicitor will try and stop us from enforcing with various different ways from claiming that it's going to apply to have the writ set aside, which, of course, it doesn't happen immediately. So nothing they do or say is going to stop it. We're here, here, here and now, still with the case. As the to and fro of calls continues, Aaron decides to give the debtor another chance to pay. Can you pay this debt? Give, give, give us a minute, mate. Aaron's patience has now run deal. out. Right, mate, I'm now going to start the removal process, OK? With no sign of payment, Aaron and Ian start an inventory of assets take? in the house. Uh, have you looked upstairs yet? No, not yet. Do you want to get the car clamped up as well? Ian immobilises the man's car, while Aaron rings for a removal truck. At the moment, the payment keeps being delayed. Can you send out a removal van on that, please? Oh, so you need a large Luton, yeah? Okay, no problem, I'll get that sorted. Get Alison on it for you straight away. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'll see you soon. Cheers, right. thank you. Bye bye. So they started the removal process. There should be another amount tacked onto it, right? Nice little telescope. Now Ian needs to make it clear what will happen if assets are removed. The money's held for 14 days. If we remove goods, they're only held for seven before they go to auction. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh. Don't make the law, I'm just here to enforce it. Then the Is it me or the wallpaper inside this house is hideous? His father calls again. Oh bad. Yeah. Okay, I've spoken to her solicitor and I understand that we have no recourses. I really am protesting in the strongest way possible about this whole procedure. It's it's wrong, wrong, wrong. But if if we have no option, we have no option. How do we pay you this money? The debtor's father finally appears to have accepted Aaron's authority. Bank transfer. Okay, are you ready for the uh, details, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He pays off his son's debt in full. I think when a debtor falls into debt, it's ultimately their responsibility, and I think it should be them to get themselves out of debt. But of course, it doesn't happen like that most of the time. Cheers, guys. Cheers, mate. I'll be removing the clamp before we leave. Please do, yeah. yeah. I don't want to keep going. I don't want to sue them now. They've got four. 
Pushing 40. 14 days to make an appeal. If he doesn't know the money, then he'll be giving his money back, won't he? But that's not our decision to make. We're just there to collect the money. We're not even there to get involved in disputes of right or wrong. At the end of the day, a writ's been issued. That person owes the money. Thanks to their persistence, Aaron and Ian got the outcome they wanted. But in Stephen Maxson, recent survey has a recent survey has revealed that nearly half of landlords in the UK have had a tenant evicted from their property in the last three years due to rent arrears. Last year, over a third of private landlords were owed money by their tenants, with the average amount exceeding £1,600. In 2016, a private landlord in the UK were owed nearly £5 billion in rent a day. High Court Enforcement Agents Max Carraher and Steve Pinner are back on the road. This time they're in Hounslow, Middlesex, to carry out an eviction. We're off to see Mr. Salim Ali, Mr. Mohammed Irfan and all other occupiers. But this is no ordinary eviction. We have a writ of possession combined with a writ of control. We're also looking to collect £3,454.75. pence. The agents have two jobs to do. One to take back the property and another to reclaim six months' worth of unpaid rent owed to the landlord, Mr Bansell. He's here to meet the agents. Just stay back while they go up. You don't go up there with them. Good morning, morning gentlemen. Mr Bansell. Yes, hi there. S Steve, and nice Steve. to meet you. And you. Okay, let's go and through the front door. Yes, please. Do they like you? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't spoken to them for a, uh, quite a few months yeah, now. No. So, um... Well, maybe a good idea if you just to wait here for a second till we... <laughs> Do you have any keys at uh, all? Yeah, I just... I just get... Okay, brilliant. The landlord's parents are also what here. Is that? His father hands keys? them the keys. Okay. Is this a whole spectacle? I'll be with... One minute, just stay there. The tenants live on the, the nice upper house. floor of the semi-detached house. We'll do this one and then we'll go up. Look on the first floor. Oh, they made it into Put a new lock in. They have changed it. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Ali! Do you have a bar or anything to open the door with? The agents have the right to force entry to repossess the property if no one answers. Thank you. But it seems there is someone in after all. Good morning. Mr. Ali? Good OK. Good morning. And you are Mr? Efran, OK. We're enforcement agents and we have a high court writ to repossess the property. Repossess the property. OK? You have one hour to collect your essentials. <laughs> Can you come in? Yes, please, thank you. The man, Mr. Irfan, is one of the tenants named on the writ. Is it just you here now? Just only Ali lives here, uh -huh. not me. But I came yesterday to stay here with him for a, a night. He's going to come back later on. What's his stuff? This is all his stuff. OK, and your stuff? I don't have anything. Oh, you don't have anything? No. OK, well, you're going to have to pack your clothes and that. I suggest you call him. Yeah. Is he local? He said that he's going to go to Chester. Chester? Leicester. Leicester. Well, he's not local then, is he? OK, well, he will have to make arrangements to come and collect his stuff. That's him. While Mr. Irfan starts to pack up his friend's belongings, the landlord's father tells Max more about the case. They did uh, show us the statement of £30,000 earning, and uh, we given them the property. And uh, as soon as they moved into the property, the first rent they stopped it, they said, we're not going to pay. 
they have been parking about five, six cars here. When we ask them why these cars are, they say we are rich people. We got six cars. There are a lot of things we wanted to do. Oh, so they've been playing in y'all face. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out immediately. Which we have cancelled it because the finance was not coming in. So I mean, financially, yes, they have. Uh, uh, just ruin over there. But upstairs, Mr. Irfan has overheard the conversation and he's not happy. Uh, please, I don't want to see them because if they abuse again, they abuse in, in my language. It's really words, okay? Shut your ears. I'll tell them to keep it down, okay? I know you understand they have a problem with you. You have to understand that. Not with me, with, with, with Salim. With the greatest respect, your name is on it as well. So the problem is with both of you. Okay. So you have to understand that. No, but again, we shouldn't be... But they're cross. They should, he, they're, they're angry. Cross they're, they're owed money. They're angry. It's always our oh, choice to try and keep the landlord away from the house whilst we're doing an eviction. Simple reason is they're not going to get on. One doesn't like the other. Either way, there's a reason they're being evicted. So if we can keep them apart, there's going to be no arguments. The agents have been at the property for just under an hour. Mr. Irfan is almost ready to leave, but now Steve has to make him aware that getting the flat back is only half the story. That in there recording. <laughs> there is three and a half thousand pound outstanding. It seems that no payment can be made, but it's clear that there's nothing of value in the flat. Yeah, it's, it's not a great deal, is there? Collecting on the three and a half thousand pounds is going to be not impossible. Steve breaks the bad news to the landlord. There's about two pound twenty worth of ever, whatever's in the flat. You're not going to get it, and that's the honest truth. All I can suggest is that you let them settle somewhere else, and then go after them. Okay? There is absolutely nothing in there. There's a wardrobe, yeah. a clothes horse. Mattress on the floor. Yeah. They've taken everything. They've taken everything. Thank you. Oh, okay. They've taken my, my, They've got about five or six cars. Uh, they've okay. moved. They've moved all of those out. More cars here. Okay. The driver. You know, everything was full here before. So. Do you know the registration numbers yeah, of the I vehicles? Do. I do. What I suggest you do: yeah. go back to our company, suggest that they do a trace on them, give them all the details of the vehicles. Uh, and hopefully we can recoup your money like that. We'd only be too pleased to do it. You're lucky they left you with the bricks. Nine times out of ten, the people that have to be evicted aren't going to have money hidden in a corner or a shoebox somewhere. The reason Sometimes. they're being evicted is because they haven't they paid the rent. They're not going to have a pot of gold sitting in the corner. The eviction is almost complete. But before Mr. Irfan leaves, the landlord's parents decide to go into the flat <laughs> That's negative. and record events. Why is he abusing? He's abusing me. He said, Sir. Why is he abusing me? Him, this is one of the landlords. He, if he wants to film, that's up to him. He shouldn't abuse. Can you just go downstairs, do the locks? I have done the locks. You've done the locks. Okay, could you wait the downstairs then, please? Yes. Shut yes. up. Right, yeah. sir, if you, you just go down, we'll deal with the repossession. Yes, okay. I'm doing it. I'm helping you out, guys. Was, <laughs> Why is he abusing for? He's downstairs now. If you just concentrate on packing up your stuff. Yeah, it was with the landlord's smoke. parents back outside, Mr. Irfan is ready to leave. That'll be his Uber cab. That's him. Uber. Yeah, that'll be him. But before he goes, he's keen Uber. to share his side of the story. Uh, they got more cases with um, people here as well. All of their people who are staying in their houses, they're not treating them in a way they need to treat them. He's lying. They're not trying to refurbish their house and stuff. They just, only that's it. House didn't look like it needed to be refurbished. It looked just fine. With Mr. Irfan gone, the landlord finally has his house back. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's yours now. They're not going back in there. Okay. So you can close your door. 
and then just make sure that you come back and make that secure with a new lock. I've not been in any communication with the tenant whatsoever. Um, the, uh, ever since we've, we, they stopped paying their rent after the first month, I contacted them by phone. They stopped answering the phone, stopped answering the door. They seemed financially stable. The agent seemed quite content. Put in that fake paperwork, blah. Uh, they're good tenants, but um, obviously it was all it was all a con, really. Okay, that's our standing. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time, sir. It's been a tricky case for the agents. I really do feel for the landlord who's lost out. He's got to pay the bills, the utilities, he's got to pay the maintenance, he's got to pay the council tax, all the charges, etc., that the tenant has refused to pay. Must be a nightmare. Got to do more extensive checks, man. A recent survey has revealed that nearly 75% of UK adults lent money to friends and family in 2016. One in 20 have lent over £5,000. However, over 40% never see their money again. Almost a quarter of people have fallen out with someone over loans and borrowing. Don't lend what you don't got. High Court Enforcement Agent Aaron Groves and trainee Connor Jackson are in Bayford, Hertfordshire. OK, mate, £6,740 and one pence to an individual. OK. The claimant is the debtor's ex-partner, who lent her money but wasn't paid back. He won a county court judgment against... Oh, yeah, this looks like a petty lover's quorum right here. ...but still wasn't paid. This is some pettiness. The claimant has escalated the case to the high court. It's only six minutes left. He really gonna get the money then. Oh, hello. My name's Aaron Groves. Um, we're here regarding a case we've been taken to court. Yeah. Are you right? Yes. Yeah, are you okay? Sorry, infection or something? Very Oh, right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Is that contagious? Oh, no, that's all right. No, they're lovely dogs. Hello. Right, we're here because you've been taken to court. Yeah. Basically, because... The, the case hasn't been paid at county court level, he's escalated to the high court. What that basically means for you is today we're here to either ask you to pay this debt, uh, which at the minute it stands at £6,740 and one pence, or we're here to look to remove goods from the property. The debtor says she's staying with her parents temporarily, but as this is her current address, the high court. Gotta show proof. It was issued here, and the agents have every right to stay and enforce it. Ideally, we, we just need this paying. Is there anybody that can help you at all? My parents can help me. Yeah, if they've got a card, they can put over the phone to us. They might have 5,000, 6,000 on their card. But, I mean, unfortunately, we've, we've got to do a job. While she calls her parents, Aaron and Connor look for goods of value belonging to her that might... This is why I'm going to stress my daughter to, like... Like, stay in school. Don't go to a man looking to be saved. Have your own, bring something to the table, and y'all can add to each other. You know what I'm saying? Cause this is, this is... <laughs> go to school for four years. Eight if you want to be a doctor. However long it takes. You know what I'm saying? ...help offset the debt if she can't pay. Connor finds a downstairs bedroom. Harry, hmm? this will be all hers. But there doesn't appear to be much of real value here. Nah. Let's where it is for now, mate. Then the debtor wants Connor to speak to her father. Yes, I will. It's my parents. OK. 
Good afternoon, my name's Con Like a laryngitis cleared up pretty quick, didn't it? Connor Jackson, High Court Enforcement Agent that's uh, in your house. I'll explain to you, well, I'll explain to your daughter. Um, yeah. We don't want to take anything that doesn't belong to her, but if the balance is paid, we won't be taking anything. No, I haven't got that amount of money. You have entered so my good. house, you're in so I'm asking so they got business there. Ed Liffin is a retired police officer of 30 years standing. I'm going to phone the police station and I'm going to report there are trespasses on my house and I'm in New York. Now you can either come back tomorrow or Friday and see me personally when I'm returned or you leave the house immediately. Up to you, your call. Uh, I won't be leaving, sir. If you want to phone the police, that's up to you. Right, okay, then I'll phone the police and send no. this trespass to my house. Not a problem, and I'll show them the High Court writ that I have to enter the property yeah, when they get here. It's not to my house, though, is it? Yes, it is, sir. Why have you got it to my house? Because that's the address that we've traced your daughter to. I'm telling you now, you're a trespasser, I'm asking. Phone the police then, sir. That's the end of the matter. A parent can <laughs> sometimes make the situation better or worse, of course. Clearly got worse. This was not where anybody wanted to be at right now. Um, in some ways it's better because of the bank of mum and dad. Uh, other times they can aggravate the situation that they feel that we're putting their son or daughter into. The case has taken an unexpected turn. Please don't be rude to my parents. He thinks we're trespassing, we've entered oh, illegally. You know what? I'm trying to sort it out. I am doing my best. My sister as well. It will take all of Connor and Aaron's patience to get this. What happened to the laryngitis, though? This tricky case resolved. High Court Enforcement Agents Aaron Groves and trainee Connor Jackson were in Bayford, Hertfordshire, to recover a debt owed to an ex-partner. At the minute, it stands at six thousand seven hundred. No, we don't want to recap. I'm sorry. Just for now, mate. Please, no. sign of the police. There's no sign of the police. But then the de oh, that's her sister? At her sister arrives. Hello. Hello, but right. I, this is my parents, sir, obviously. We never said it Lovely. wasn't your parents' house. We never said that at any no, point. No, no, but how does it work if she is not actually living here? She is. But she, not. Your stuff's she's here, you're living no, here. But that is her she, Is she sleeping here? She's sleeping She's living here, here then. I'm staying here. She's you're staying living here, here though. You're not, not sleeping out on the street, you're not sleeping in a car, you are technically living here. You Even if it, talk to him, talk to him. Even if it's for a short period of time... So this is like the first notification? No, we sent a letter seven days ago. To this address? To this address. So did you get this letter seven days ago? No, I swear I didn't. She's lying, grown woman lying, pushing 40, 50, lying. It seems that she wants to take control of the situation. She gets on the phone to another sister. They are doing what they what their job is, what this county, whatever this court. That's is, a high court so, writ. You know, high court is it? Really? High, but that's a high court writ. This is a high court writ, so you know it's all legal. They're not just like thugs that are just literally breaking in and, and removing your property. They're you know they're doing what what they. It's the sensible sister right here. There's nothing. There's nothing else to do. There is nothing else that we can do. But it does make our life a little bit easier when one member of the family goes, right, this is how it is, we're gonna deal with it, and then we'll deal with you at a later date. Let me pass you on to one of the chat you can, this is my eldest sister, this is my parents. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's just my poor parents taking her in. Okay, this, just yeah. listen to what I wanna say. The address that we've got for her is here, and as she's sleeping here and all of her stuff is here, it's reasonable to believe that she's yeah. living here. We can take payment for more than one place as well, I mean, doesn't it? I mean, I've got, I've got, a couple, I've got a couple of grand. Okay. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I know that's this, and I'm not doing it. You, you take cards, We can, yeah. Have you got any cards? Never gonna see it again. Anything on? No, she hasn't. The whole family agreed to split the cost of settling the debt between. I guess. Strong families. <laughs> Yeah, just bear with me two seconds, please. Okay, how much are you paying on this card? Three thousand. Three thousand. Another two thousand pounds is paid on the mother's card. Okay, how much are you paying on this card? The, the remainder, yeah. And the remainder of the debt is paid by the other sister. And that's it all sorted. Excuse me. Right, that's it. Jobs are good. 
Right, we shall leave without leaving, without taking anything. Nothing. Okay. Debt just doesn't affect one person. You know, if you're in debt, it affects everybody around you in different ways. And, you know, and especially if you're living... Oh, yeah, that is W family, but... <laughs> ...with people, and we turn up at your door, it is going to directly affect them. Every address that we attend is different. Everyone's got their own life experiences. They're going through their own problems at different points in their lives. So you never know what you're going to get when you knock on the door. You don't know what story you're going to hear. Aaron and Connor's patience has paid off. Just after two hours and we've walked out with it paid in full. Hopefully that's another happy client. An unhappy family, though. All because she tried to bury her head in the sand and claiming she didn't know anything about it. Okay. Yeah, I need all of it though. I need the 11 11. Ah, they got their money back. Okay. Figure. He getting his 3,000. See, hello, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your posts. If you watching and you not subbed, hit the sub button.